What is judicial independence? In past work, I found it helpful to think about independence as a relationship. We should never say X is independent, but rather X is independent from Y. When we're talking about independence in some particular context, we just have to fill out the different possible values for X and Y here. It's like a fill in the blanks exercise. Let's start with the left hand side of this exercise. When we're talking about judicial independence, are we talking about individual judges or judges collectively? Often, we have individual judges in mind when we talk about independence. Our mental image is of a judge deciding a case who is pressured by someone else. But sometimes you don't need to pressure individual judges in order to achieve the desired outcome. It might be possible to keep the judiciary as a whole dependent on you. Some argue that this is true of judges in the United States. Individual judges on federal courts are independent. They enjoy life tenure, and even if a politician was inclined to put pressure on them, there are few things that they could do to affect the career of an individual judge. But politicians in the United States do exercise significant control over the judiciary as a whole. The federal court system makes annual budget requests which must be approved by Congress. Some authors have argued that Congress uses the budget as a signalling device, offering up less money when Congress is dissatisfied with the general direction of the federal judiciary's rulings, and offering up more money when they are satisfied. Turning now to the right-hand side of this exercise, who is it judges are independent from? There are a number of possible candidates. We might think about judges' independence from economic interests, independence from the public, independence from politicians in general, and independence from government specifically. The first two cases are rarely studied. Independence from economic interests does, however, relate to patterns of academic recruitment and the degree to which judges are recruited from individuals of distinct social classes. Independence from people in general might matter for places which have judicial elections, but these are rare, and so most effort is spent on the third and fourth categories. Sometimes people who study the relationship between the judiciary and politicians in general might describe this as the study of interbranch relations. The more the emphasis is placed on judicial independence, and the more the study is comparative in nature, the more likely we're talking about the independence of judges from government.